It's lecture 36, and we're going to discuss together Van de Voos reactive system. Five. Van de Voos liquid phase reaction is carried out in an isothermal CSTR according to the following stoichiometric equations. A goes to B, B goes to C, so you have here reactions in series, and 2A goes to D. You can see that you have here parallel reactions, correct? A goes to B and A also goes to D. So there's competition. So this is a complex, a complex reaction, right? Because it involves reactions in series and reactions in parallel. Where B is the desired product and C and D are the undesired byproducts. The feed to the CSTR contains the reactant A only. The reaction rates are given by the following rate laws. Minus RA1 equals K1 times CA minus RB2. That is the rate of disappearance of the reactant B or a species B through reaction 2. That is K2 times CB minus RA3 equals K3 times CA2. And then we have some few other additional information. The volume is given, C0 is given, epsilon0 is given as well. What's required? Well, first, calculate the species concentrations, CI, and the selectivity and yield at steady state for the given condition. So when we are operating at steady state, what's the concentration of the involved species at the exit? Plot CI versus tau. Find the optimum tau. Great. So we're going to change the system. Right. So every time we're going to change tau. And then we calculate the concentrations as the, at the exit. And then we change tau again. And then we calculate the new concentration at the exit. And then you have to, for the specified V, calculate the optimum epsilon naught. And for the specified epsilon naught, calculate the optimum V. Here, for example, we say, okay, after finding out what is the optimum tau, uh, let's say, for instance, I'm happy with this volume. How should I change epsilon naught to get to the optimum condition, operating conditions? And then, is this an acceptable reactor scheme for to use for this reaction? Explain your answer and show how the selectivity and yield can be further increased. And finally, plot the concentration profiles during the startup, where the reactor is initially filled with a solvent only and its volume is maintained constant. Type. Let's go with the first requirement. Well, we need to calculate the concentrations of the involved species and then we calculate the selectivity and yield okay that means we have to solve the CRE design algorithm right okay which starts with the design equation what's the design equation well it's a CSTR so you know that if I not minus if I plus integration of ri dv from 0 to v equals dni by dt we said we are operating at steady state so this guy goes to 0 right and then let's rewrite the equation in terms of concentration of course i cannot use conversion because it's useless right so i use concentration we have a liquid phase reaction so let's continue if i naught can be written as epsilon naught c i naught minus epsilon c i plus r i times v equals to zero of course we can solve for v so we take v to the other side and then we have v equals stays here well we have optional common factor so we have ci naught minus ci 
divided by minus r i correct so here we are assuming epsilon equals epsilon naught because we have a liquid phase reaction okay so there we go we have a nice looking design equation let's apply it for a b c and so on okay so let's apply it for a so for a we have v equals epsilon naught c a naught that is in the feed minus c a divided by minus r a and then we can write for b as well v equal epsilon naught of course we don't have b in the feed so it will be c b divided by r b let's write it for okay if you allow me i would raise these guys here let's write it for d come on so for d you have okay equals epsilon naught c d divided by r d of course we should have write it for c first and then d but i'm um, just skipping that well we can write the other one it's no big deal c c over r c okay and then we write the rate loss and the rate loss we have them already on top come on these are the rate loss however we go to the stoichiometry come on where first we need to write the first we need to write the rate of fraction right so let's look at r a so we have r a equals well we can write actually minus r a if we want come on minus r a equals minus r a 1 minus r a 2 because it's minus so everything is minus okay so for a minus r a 1 is k 1 c a right and minus r a 2 well there is no 2 a is not involved in reaction 2 so actually it's only involved in reaction 1 and 3 so we should write here 3 come on okay come on good so that is minus r a 3 which is plus k 3 c a square come on and then we can write also for b uh, you want to write for b okay let's go for it so for b let's write r b equals r b 1 correct plus r b 2 yeah uh, it's not involved it's not involved in reaction 3 right okay so r b 1 r b 1 okay uh, run out of space as usual so i'll just erase this guy come on okay so we know that we know that r a 1 divided by minus 1 equals r b 1 divided by plus 1 right so r b 1 equals minus r a 1 right so r b 1 equals minus r a 1 so we know that minus r a 1 is basically k 1 c a hello what about r b 2 well we already have minus r b 2 so that's minus k 2 c b tamam okay so all of this is r b tamam so again we write r c and r d in the same way okay now we substitute we combine come on we combine the above equations together so let's take one by one let's start with a of course because that's the only equation you can start with because you have only one unknown in this equation the other ones you have at least two unknowns okay so let's see where are the equations that we need here we go minus ra so we need these 
two equations. Okay, let's use them then. Come on. So we said for A, the design equation was as follows. B equals epsilon naught, C A naught minus C A divided by minus R A. And if you divide by epsilon naught, you get tau equals C A naught minus C A divided by minus R A. And we said minus R A was K1 C A plus K3 C A squared. Okay, as you see, Shabab, this is a equation of a second order so the value of tau is given value of tau is given c a naught is given k1 is given k3 is given as well so the only unknown is c a1 so you can either use solver or ta -da, use the quadratic formula right so Basically, you, you do the cross multiplication and you rearrange the equation. So you write it in this way and then the solution should be this. Tama. And if you're going to solve this problem for only one value of tau, then you can use solver. However, if you want to solve this problem for different values of tau, different values of tau then it's better to use this formula okay right then you do the same for probably d and then the rest okay but please make sure that you start with the equations which have the least number of unknowns okay i'm sharing with you my solution here so i solved this using excel come on and this is tau so plug in the value of tau and then automatically it will calculate for me c a c b c c and c d okay of course you have to enter the formula formula in these cells okay and you relate them to k1 k2 k3 and so on and also tau of course related to tau and then you can also calculate the selectivity instantaneous and overall and you can see that they are equal correct same thing with the yield they are equal because that's cstr type that was part one for part two i actually use the same table but i dragged down the cells come on and every time I was changing tau. So I did tau, I used tau from 0.25, uh, even less I believe, up to 1.75 I believe. Okay, so I used this table which I made in Excel. I dragged it, dragged this down and automatically solved everything and then I Plot this. Make sure, Shabab, that you notice that the CB curve is actually CB times 5. So I multiply it by 5 just to exaggerate the curve so I can see the optimum value. And you can see now the optimum tau. The optimum tau is around 0.775. So the maximum value of tau is somewhere here, right? Somewhere here okay where you get the maximum value for CB okay and this is the maximum value of CB so basically a smaller tau a smaller tau is not good because remember tau represents the resonance time okay for a smaller tau 
you're not really achieving appreciable conversion of A to B. Okay, so you're not getting a lot of B. But a larger tau, a larger tau actually giving more time for the reaction of B to C. So B is getting consumed more than it is produced. Tamam. So therefore we have an optimum value for tau. Okay, let's go to part six, unsteady state operation. Of course, you know how to deal with unsteady state operation. We start with the design equation. And of course, we can solve it in terms of concentration. The volume is constant. So you can remember that you will use the general equation. So for example, if I not minus if I plus integration of R I D V from zero to V equals D N I by D T. And then of course for F I naught you have C I naught times epsilon naught uh -huh. epsilon naught okay actually uh oops why did it change color i don't know okay uh, minus uh c i times epsilon and of course epsilon equals epsilon naught plus r i times v equals n of n i you can write d c i times v divided by dt of course v is constant goes outside you can divide by v right Sama. and so on okay you can write all the design equations for the unsteady state operation okay so what can we see from here what can we see from here let's see well let's see of course not all the species reach uh, their steady state at the same time okay although it's a same system one reactor but you have different subsystems okay one for a one for b one for c one for d so different species reach steady state at different time um, okay some of them behave like a first order some behave like second order and so on uh, i guess that's uh, you can also see uh, what time it takes to reach steady state completely okay and this is the report this is the report you can check the value for ca at steady state and you can compare it to the value that you have found in part one okay do that please okay so check if you are really achieving the same or uh, obtaining the same value okay with this we reach the end of lecture 36 i hope you enjoyed the van de reactive system problem and see you later